Most any doll that you work with is going to have an inspector where it will add additional functionality for helping with your workflow. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at Studio One 3's inspector and its features. Now, the inspector is going to give us quick access to a variety of functions and controls that will change depending on whether we have an audio track or an instrument track selected in our arrange view. Uh, so to, to a large extent, its controls are uh, context sensitive. And we can access the inspector by clicking this I button there up top or by using F4 on our keyboard. And we're going to cover every uh, feature within the inspector. And I'm going to try to move through this fairly quickly so that I can keep this down to one video instead of doing two parts. And some of the information included in here, I've already done an in-depth tutorial on that. so. In that case, you're going to see a link pop up here in the upper right hand corner. And if you wanted to find out uh, more information or see a more in-depth tutorial, you can click on that link. So let's go ahead and then get started. At the very top of the inspector here, we can see the name of the uh, event here that we're working with. We can actually double click there. And I'm just going to call that piano because there's a piano part within there. Hit enter. And so we can change our track name there. We can also choose a different color if we'd like. And then next we have tempo. And this is basically going to affect the behavior of our audio event here and what it does whenever we change the song tempo. So right now it's set to follow. And in this case, if I change the tempo to say 140, then after I hit enter, you'll notice that the first, the border of this audio event is going to remain on bar two here. So I'll go ahead and press enter. And then you can see that that has remained on bar two. I'll control Z. The next option that we have is don't follow. So if I come back and change to 140, then it's going to remain where it is. Control Z. Then the next thing we have is time stretch. And then the this song does have tempo information encoded in it, and it is 60. The file tempo, as we can see down here, is 60 beats per minute. So once I change to 120, then it's going to half that, because 60 beats per minute is the original tempo of our file. And so when we have time stretch on, that's what it's going to do. If I change this back to, say, follow, then it's going to go back to uh, the behavior uh, as when we first started the video. The next option that we have is the time stretch mode. And you're going to want to choose one of these options based on the material that you're working with for your audio. Now, and this is going to apply if we use that time stretch mode. So if I put that back on time stretch, it's going to use a drum algorithm to stretch this audio. And that's not right because it's a piano part. So we'd want to choose the polyphonic here because there are chords playing. You can choose the solo here for like a vocal or a part that's just playing a melody. And then the audio bend, you would want to use this if you're going to be using the bend tool and working with bend markers. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back to follow. The next feature that we have available to us is group. And if I were to press T and then I'm going to have three more audio tracks that I'll add and click OK. We can group tracks within the song that we're working on to have any behavior that we apply to one affect the other ones. So if I hold shift and then select the top one, our initial audio track, I'll right click and choose to group selected tracks. And then now you can see Studio One adds group one. That's kind of the default uh, naming system that will happen. And then now if I press solo on one of these tracks, then all will be soloed mute. If I record arm and so on. And so then with this here, we have the option to rename the group. If we'd like to say, take this one out of the group, we can manage that there. Or if we have multiple groups, we can select. So that's what our group function is. And I'm going to go ahead and select these and get rid of those. 
We then have a layers feature here. And the layer you can think of, if you say have a vocal part here that you've recorded and you want to experiment with a different sound and you want to do a different take, but you still want to use the inserts and effects uh, and inputs and outputs that you set up within your original, then you can create an additional layer that is going to sit within this track and make advantage of those inserts and effects. And then you can kind of compare the difference between the two. We can also duplic duplicate layers to try out different edits. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to just duplicate this audio part here. And we can accomplish that by coming and d duplicating the layer. And then so now we have a copy of this audio event on a separate layer that's also contained within this track. And we have the option to add the layer. As I mentioned, we can rename layers and then we can remove the layer. So I'm just going to hit this X. We can also remove layers by clicking there. And actually, I'm going to duplicate that again because I want to show you this next feature here, layers follow events. Now we just duplicated this. If I were to move this, then we can see that that layer follows along. The audio event will follow. I'll control Z and put that back. If I were to uh, deselect that, then move, then you can see it doesn't follow. And now we'll go ahead and delete that other layer out. And I'll check that back. Play overlaps. If we have multiple audio events and then we have two that may be overlapping, say at the end here, instead of having the audio cut off, if we select this play overlaps, then both audio parts that are on top of each other will play back simultaneously. Now I'm working on a small monitor, so my resolution is uh, low unfortunately, and we do have some more features available to us. So if I drag down, then we can see we have some other options here. And our next one is delay. And this is going to allow you to apply a positive or negative time delay to the track. And we have an available range of minus 100 to 100 milliseconds. Next, we have automation. And we can come in and just use these controls to actually add automation pretty quickly right here. And let's go ahead and do that. I will, let's work with some pan. So I'll choose pan. Now you can see that our display changes to show our pan control. And we then want to choose an automation mode and I'm going to choose touch. If I then go ahead and play back our little piece here, Okay, and now we have automation, pretty straightforward and easy. Now I'll go ahead and select those automation points and delete them out. And I'm going to turn the display back to off. The next section that we have is our routing and mix controls. And we're not going to spend too much time here because these basically mimic what we have within the console. If I press F3 and then bring up the console, this is our piano track. So as I adjust the level here, we can see that that adjusts the fader within the console. If I adjust the panning, it adjusts in the console as well. So this is pretty straightforward. We've got our record arm, uh, inserts, sends. We can change the routing. And so that's what that section is. Let's then move on to our very last section here for working with audio tracks. At the top here, we have an area for adding event effects. So if we, we can add an effect to this whole track and it will apply to any events that we have within the track. But what if we want to apply it to one specific event? And in order to enable our, uh, event effects, we can just click enable here. And then we expand out and we can see that we can click this plus and then add any effect that we'd like to that particular event that we may have selected within the arrange view. And we can just 
click to disable and it folds up and disappears out of our way. We next have a readout of the audio event position. We can actually click and manually change these and it will adjust our audio event size uh, and position. We then have the file tempo and we can actually click and change that as well. We then have a speed up and then if I go ahead and play back Now if I hit speed up, this works in a way that if I change this to two, then it's going to play it twice as fast, three, three times as fast. Uh, so let me change this to two. I'll press enter. And then we can see that this adjusted. Uh, and has really sped that up there. So I'm going to put this back to one. And then we have transpose, so we can transpose any audio event that we have selected. We can also tune it. We can normalize by clicking there. I'll go ahead and undo that. We then can adjust our gain by clicking in there. Uh, we can put a fade in, so if I put two seconds, I'll put enter. Then we can see that this has been adjusted for us here. We can also just click and drag as well, and then it updates to reflect our uh, adjustments within the arrange view. Fade out, bend marker. This is to show or hide our bend markers, and we can adjust the threshold. So if I were to bo open up the, uh, not the bend tool, but we want the bend panel. With this audio event selected, I'll analyze it. We now have our bend markers, and the threshold is 80%. If that's too many for us, we can adjust up here, but we can also change this to say 50. And then we can also deselect here to hide those. So I'm gonna control Z and hide that bin panel out. And I think we're done for working with the audio track. And let's move on then to our MIDI track. Now we have three sections again here. This is gonna be the top section, our center section and below. So let me expand out our top section here. Now as with the audio tracks, we can come in and rename, also change the color of our uh, MIDI track here or instrument track. And then the time base, this is gonna function similar to the tempo mode with our audio tracks. So by default, this is actually set to beats. And then if I, were to change the tempo here to 140 BPM, then you can see that our MIDI part here has adjusted itself accordingly. And I'm gonna control Z to put that back to 120. If I change this to seconds and then change this to say 150, then you can see that this stays in the same space here and does not follow along with our tempo adjustment. I'll control Z to undo that. And then I'm gonna put this back to beats. Group, we've already taken a look at groups and how they work. We've also covered layers and layers follow events. We also talked about the delay and how we can adjust that by minus 100 to 100 milliseconds. We have a transpose. This is going to be applied to any MIDI notes within this track here. So if I play this back again, so we've got our mojito organ that we're working with. Now I can, let's take that down by an octave. This is within semitones and we have an available range of minus 64 to plus 64. So I'm just gonna take this down an octave and then let's go ahead and play that back. Okay, so we can see how that works. I'm gonna put that back as it was. And next we have velocity. And this allows you to boost or cut incoming note velocity before it arrives to the VST instrument assigned to this track. And at the very bottom here, the last one for this 
particular area, we have note effects and we can click this plus here and then choose from a variety of effects that we can um, apply in real time to uh, whatever instrument that we're using. And after we've recorded our MIDI information, we can also apply these effects after that as well. Now let's move on to this middle section here. And we're not going to spend too much time here because this, again, as with our audio track, if I F3 and bring up the console, this corresponds to what we have within our console. So if I open up the, this panel here, we've got our inserts and sends. We also have these here. And then we can record arm, mute, solo, and so on. Choose our inputs, outputs. So this is going to be the same as the channel within our console. So let's move right along here and expand up our very last section. I'm going to F3 and close out the console. And then here, as with our audio events, we have a start and end readout here. And then we can also click and manually adjust these. So I'm just even, I'm clicking and dragging. So that's one way that you can adjust, or you can just double click and manually enter in a number. We can also transpose individual MIDI parts by clicking here. And then again, we have that velocity control. And this basically will apply that to a specific MIDI part within our instrument track. And so we've made it through all of the features of the inspector. I think this just may be short enough for a full video, albeit a bit long but maybe not too long. So hope you stuck through and found some information that's going to help you out in your productions, and I'll see you in the next video.